Hey guys, welcome to Life Builds. My name is Michael. And I'm Zoya. And today we're picking up our newest project car that we're gonna have for one video. And just like that, we have our new project BMW. This is a 2009 BMW 328i with supposedly a bad fuel pump. It's about 112 right now. I'm gonna push this car into the garage real quick. It doesn't run. And then I can get out of this heat and I'll explain a lot more in a second. Alrighty, I was able to get the BMW tucked away here in the garage. And I figured I'll show you around the car a little bit. Outside, it's pretty dirty. Supposedly the hood latch failed, causing some dents here and here as it smacked up. Not 100% sure on that one. Other than that, the car is pretty clean. Moving on into the interior. It's pretty dirty in here. It's got some weird purple lights. The seat's ripped, I'm gonna fix that. But other than that, the car is as it should be. I got the battery charging. All right, so my purpose of this build is that I just wanna clean this car up. I wanna get a new a car back on the road and I wanna make a little bit of money in the process. So I bought this car as a non-running BMW that just cranks but won't start. I'm pretty sure it's the fuel pump. I will go through why I believe it's the fuel pump in this situation. I cranked it, I pulled the rear seat, no activation of the fuel pump, so I'm gonna check the fuses real quick and then we'll dive into it. Okay, so I'm in the three series now and I wanted to show you how I came to the conclusion that this BMW needs a fuel pump. I went to the back seat, pulled the cover, exposed the fuel pump and the wiring for the fuel pump, and then I got my voltmeter here and I'll demonstrate what I did. Okay, so what I did here is I connected the positive terminal to the positive and the negative to the negative. I have my voltmeter set up. I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna put the key in. I'm not gonna press on the brake because I don't need the car to crank. And then I'm gonna reach over here, press the start button, and we should see voltage appear. And that right there, 11.71. It's a little bit low, you should be looking at about 12, but I know the battery's a little bit low on this car. So I'm charging that currently, but that shows me right there that we have power to the fuel pump and the fuel pump is not activating. So I'm gonna go ahead and order one off Amazon real quick here. Should be about a hundred bucks. And then I'll catch you in a couple days, see if we can fix this car. Alrighty guys, it's about a week later here. We just got the new fuel pump in and I'm gonna get started on replacing it and we'll get to see if this $100 fix fixes the BMW completely. Let's get started. Alrighty guys, it's the next day here. And as you would have expected, the next clip should have been me pressing the start button and the car roaring to life. But you know what? That's not always what happens. And I wanna walk you through the process of how I believe I may have been screwed, but I'm gonna fix it and I'm gonna come through full circle and we're gonna make a good deal out of this car. So as you know, about a week ago, I purchased this 2009 BMW 328i with a blown fuel pump. And the reason I jumped to that conclusion is a few reasons. The first one is in the listing, it said it was diagnosed by a mechanic and that the fuel pump was the only issue, just needed a fuel pump, it was ready to go. The guy did not have the time to fix it and it was ready to go. So when I got there, I grabbed my voltmeter, I tested voltage to the fuel pump and there was voltage to the fuel pump. However, the fuel pump was not activating. So I also agreed with his diagnostic and I said, okay, cool. You know, it needs a fuel pump. I bought it, I brought it home. Then I ordered the new fuel pump had it shipped in and I just installed it. 
but you see when I replaced it, the fuel pump did not activate. And so then I went and I tested, bench tested the old fuel pump and sure enough, it roared to life. So the car does not need a fuel pump, which then had gave me this sinking feeling because I had some red flags when I bought this car. And I'm walking you through this process because I want you to know that while I do flip a lot of cars, sometimes these things happen. You have to be willing to roll with it and just kind of figure out what your next options are so you don't end up losing money. So after figuring out that the car did not actually need a fuel pump, I was doing a lot more testing. I ended up putting 12 volts directly to the fuel pump. It fired up and it pumped fuel to the system and tried to start the car. But yet when I pressed start, it just sat there and cranked, which means we have a bigger issue. The injectors aren't firing, the spark's not right, or the timing is not correct. Well, that's a much bigger issue than a fuel pump. So then I got out my top 10 RD Diag 800BT scanner, which I had scanned when I first bought the car and I didn't notice anything alarming because the battery had died. So there was a bunch of codes, I cleared them. And when it's hot there, you know, it was about 112 degrees, you're trying to buy this car. It's not always that easy to just sit there and keep pressing the start button and seeing what codes come back. Well, I finally ran the codes again after doing all this work to the car and I found some troubling codes. You see, it shows the DME, the ECU of the car, is not communicating. So we have no communication to the fuel pump, we have no communication to the transmission control module, and a bunch of other body control modules on this BMW. And I would never have been able to see these if I didn't have that beautiful scanner, but thankfully I have it. So now I'm gonna take you through the process of trying to figure out why is the ECU not communicating with the rest of the car. And hopefully we can turn this supposedly bad situation into a good situation. Now I wanna say here, this is the reason I believe I was a little bit screwed in this situation. I got there and I had noticed the guy had a lot of cars for sale. He seemed in a very big rush to sell the cars. So that's a big red flag. If someone's rushing to sell a car, it's usually because they're trying to offload a problem. But I went against my better judgment and I was like, you know what, I need a new car for the channel. I need some more content and I decided to buy it anyways. Another reason is he said he had a professional mechanic look at the car and run a diagnostic on it. However, when I asked him to see the paperwork for that, he pulled up a cash app transfer and showed me it said BMW Diagnostic $50. That's not really a write-up. That's not a mechanic looking at a car. That's a friend coming over and him paying him 50 bucks to look at the car. That was another red flag, but you know what? When I tested voltage to the pump and it wasn't activating, I was like, you know what? It's gotta, it's gotta be just the fuel pump. So let's get started and see if we can turn this bad situation into a positive one by figuring out why the DME is not activating. Okay, I'm in the garage now and I've been scouring the forms, trying to figure out why the DME would not communicate with the car. Well, we're gonna start from simplest to most complex. It could be a wiring issue. It could be as simple as a fuse or an IBS connection. So I'm starting with the simplest procedure first. First thing to try is disconnect the battery for 15 minutes, press on the brakes so it drains the battery system, and that should supposedly reset the DME. Okay, I have a bit of an update here. I figured out why the fuel pump wouldn't prime when I had the car turned on, even though there was power to this plug. On the bottom side of this plug, it appears that the fuel pump plug was backwards, causing there to be power to the fuel pump, but no ground because it was one pin off. So I figured that out, I turned it around and it does prime. Alrighty, I've reconnected the battery after waiting a few minutes and we're gonna see if it fixes the problem for this no start BMW. I'm not very hopeful, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, but hey, if it was just the battery needed to be reconnected, that'd be pretty cool. Key going in. Put it onto position two. I don't know if you can hear that, but the fuel pump is priming. Like I explained, the connector was backwards. That's another reason why I believe that the guy may have been doing some fishy stuff because it was backwards, but we'll see. So let's give it a start and see what happens. nothing and now we're going to go up to the front we're going to check the fuel rail and if fuel comes out of the fuel rail we know we have still a dme issue Alrighty, so i have a screwdriver here there is the fuel rail ah yep fuel coming out which means the car has fuel the fuel injectors are not firing there's not spark or the timing is incorrect so I'm gonna show you now, I'm gonna scan the car again. I'm gonna clear everything and see what comes back on now that we've fixed the connection issue. All right, I have the car in position two. Press scan, select the BMW, wait for it to pair. 
and then we will run a full scan on the vehicle. I will show you each code that shows up and then I'll clear every code. We'll crank it a few more times and see what comes back. Okay, so it is currently scanning the car. You see how on that first code, it went by pretty quickly, but it showed that there was no ECM at the very beginning of the code. That's the issue we're running into currently. It just shows there's no ECM in this car. So I'm gonna clear everything right here and we'll see what comes back. So once everything is done clearing, I'll crank the car a few more times, get the system to rearm, and then we'll see what happens. Alrighty, I've cranked the car a few times and here's what codes came back. So we'll just show you a few. So as you can see, this is the fuel pump, no message from transmitter DME DDE. Let's check the transmission. Here's the same code no message from engine control. So as you can see, we're still struggling with the same issue. So let's dive in, let's go up front and let's check the ECU, let's check some fuses and go from there. So I have cleaned every single one of these connections for all of the relays up here. The ECU I believe is right here. Nothing looks too weird, so that's a really good sign. So the next thing, I know I need to check voltage to each one of these, but the next thing I'm gonna check is I'm gonna check all the fuses because I'm really hoping it's a very simple fix instead of doing a lot of diagnostic, but obviously I will have to do that if those aren't good. I also cleaned all the grounds right here. Let's go find where the fuses are for the ECU and the engine management controls, and let's go see what we can find. All right, we're in the glove box on the side of this three series. We're looking in there at the fuse box and we're looking for fuse F50, which is engine control management, ECM. So I'm gonna go pull that fuse, I'll show you what it is. And then I'm also gonna pull about five more fuses related to transmission, ignition, and a bunch of other little things that could be faulty with this car. Alrighty guys, I have made a pretty bad discovery. Um, the engine control management fuse was missing. That's not, that's really bad. That means the guy was really, there's something wrong with this car that he was trying to hide. So I just replaced the fuse and here we go. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens with this car. I'm, I'm pretty worried you're gonna hear it for the first time. Let's see what happens. Okay, well, hey, the car started up that time. Okay. Why, why would you pull the fuse? Is there something wrong with the engine? Let's, let's go listen. Okay, we got some smoke coming out. All right, I'm gonna go turn that off, see what happened. So is that oil on the, or is that an electrical burning? Hmm. Well guys, the mystery continues. Why would you pull the ECU, ECM fuse? That's pretty sketchy. We're gonna have to look into this car a little bit more. But I got an appointment to run to, so I guess I'll catch you guys in a little bit when I'm back. Alrighty, I'm back from my appointment and I have my beautiful girlfriend here. We are gonna test to see if that smoke coming up is electrical smoke or if it's just simply oil burning off the exhaust manifold. We should have probably gotten the fire extinguisher. Yeah, we're a little bit worried. That's why she's here. So I'm gonna try to do like a quick disconnect on the battery. I'm gonna have her start it up and I'm gonna get underneath the car and see if I can find where the smoke's coming from. Alrighty, crawling under the car. I believe I found the culprit for the smoke. I don't know if you can see up there on the exhaust, but there is quite a bit of fluid that looks like oil. There you go, that's a better angle. You can see all the fluid on the exhaust. So I'm gonna clean that off and see if the smoke goes away once I start the car, because the last thing I wanna do is I just fixed the car and I don't wanna catch it on fire. So we'll do that and then we're gonna see what else is hiding at this mystery BMW. Alrighty, I have cleaned off as much oil as possible. It's pretty hard to get most of it off but I'm gonna have my girlfriend start up the car and we're gonna check for smoke. Go for it. So if it's oil smoke, it should burn off in a little bit. If it's electrical, we're gonna have a major issue. So I got a battery disconnect really quickly and we'll see what happens. So you can see smoke coming off. I'm gonna crawl into the car and see where it's coming from. Okay, it does appear that it's burning off the exhaust. So I'm gonna let it burn for a little bit and see what happens. It's been running for about 30 seconds. And as you can see here, there's almost no smoke anymore. So I don't know yet, 
you know, maybe the transmission is blown in this car or something, but it's really, really weird for the engine control management fuse to be pulled. Uh, I got some really bad feelings about this one, but hey, I know how to stop a transmission, so we're gonna let this car down after we, you know, run it for a little bit, make sure nothing catches on fire. Take it on a test drive and see if we fixed it. One thing I'm kind of listening to right now is I think the exhaust is aftermarket. So babe, would you give it a couple baby revs, maybe 3000 RPMs? Let's hear. Yep, rev it. Wow, that's definitely not stock. I wonder uh, if they straight piped it or something. But well, that's pretty cool. I don't know. I'm pretty baffled by this one. I guess we'll see if it drives. Alrighty guys, we're gonna see if the mystery BMW will drive under its own power. I guess I'll have Zoya jump in and let's go on a test drive. All right, let's see the shifts through all the gears. I mean, it's shifting. Maybe it could use a fluid flush. I mean, maybe the transmission is it's not super crisp, but this is also the first three series I've owned. So if it's not the transmission, which it seems to be driving fine, I'm thinking, you know, Zoya and I were thinking, well, maybe he pulled the wrong fuse. When I was searching for the fuel pump fuse, there's three different fuse diagrams that work for these cars. One of them's from like 07 to 08. There's like a couple different fuse boxes. And so he may have pulled the wrong fuse thinking it was the fuse fuel pump but that doesn't really explain why you wouldn't put it back maybe he accidentally forgot to put it back or maybe and here's a really good idea because remember how i said the battery I, battery died on this car and it had all those random battery codes as we know from the 7 series bmw when bmws drop below nine and a half volts they will trip the transmission into limp mode so he may have gotten this transmission into limp mode simply due to the low battery and pull up the engine control management thing so he could sell it as needing a fuel pump instead of needing a transmission. I mean, I've gone through all the gears. I think it's fine, honestly. I'm not sure. We'll have to see, obviously, over the next couple days. All right, where are we going? Oh, oh. the car just died. Um, well, I was just taken on the test drive. I went to put it in sport mode so it would, so I could do a nice pull for you guys. And it died. And I just had to sprint about half a mile pushing this car because we were in a very main intersection. Pulled over, checked the fuel pump. It wasn't priming. And so I let it sit there for a little bit and I replaced the DME fuse again, which wasn't blown. And the car fired right up. So now I'm trying to baby it home and it, I think, I think I know why the fuse was pulled, or I think, I think I know why this car was, was sold. There is something wrong, I just don't know why. So we're gonna try to make it home and then we'll do some more diagnostic. Well, what an eventful test ride that was. We got to a stoplight. I threw it in sport mode to test all the gears in the transmission and all of a sudden it died. Well, then you hear the siren turn on. There was an ambulance behind me. It was a super great experience. Three guys ended up helping me push the car to the next parking lot where I then messed around with the fuses. None of them were blown. And then the car started right up and I drove it home. Then I hit a speed bump coming into my neighborhood. The car shut off again. So I tried to restart it. It started up fine. So I think we're dealing with a loose wire here, but obviously it's the next day I've changed my clothes. What I've done since the last clip you saw is I've checked fuel pressure. So I made sure the system was getting good fuel pressure. I checked all the connections to the fuel pump. I checked all the fuses. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this car a quick wash so that if I break down again, at least it looks nice. And then I'm gonna have my buddy follow me with an SUV so that they can tow me if I break down. I cleared all the codes and I'm just gonna see what happens. I wanna see what codes come back when the car ends up failing so I can figure out what it was. Or maybe it was just a simple loose connection that I just typed. <laughs> Alrighty 
guys, I took it for about a 10 minute test drive. And sure enough, as I was pulling into a parking spot, it ended up dying. Couldn't have been a more convenient spot, but I'm slightly smelling fuel coming through the AC. So then I, that got me curious. I came up front and I'm noticing, I don't know if you can see in there, there is what appears to be fluid around where the spark plug holes are. So I'm assuming that maybe I don't have a sealed injector or the fuel rail is leaking or something causing the pressure to dip really low, which would make sense why it would restart after a little bit because it's built up enough pressure. So I'm gonna let the car cool down so we don't get a fire going. And then I'm gonna go take it back to my house to pull all the injectors, clean them, reseed them, and then we'll see what happens from there. Well, I was in the middle of editing this video and I realized this video is just dragging on and on and on. At the beginning of this video, I said, I'm gonna do a one video series where I just buy, fix and sell it. However, I didn't realize that I was gonna run into the ECU issue where there was no communication and that the fuel pump was not gonna fix the problem. So instead of wasting your guys' time, I'm trying to keep videos very light and happy and fun. I'm gonna make this two videos, I believe, maybe three, but hopefully just two. And the goal, part two, we're gonna fix that final fuel issue maybe fix the injectors, fix the fuel leak, and then we're gonna figure out what we can sell this car for. So make sure to smash the subscribe button, throw a like on the video, and turn on your notification bell so you never miss another Life Builds video. And I'll catch you on the next one.